So one of the first things that people want to draw is a face. Now I am dividing this face up in a very basic way. But if we look, if we look, you know that I started out with just an oval. That's not a perfect oval, by the way. <laughs> That's a much better oval. That's a much better oval. I realize that most of you are working naturally, and that's fine. And as you probably already know, I'm doing this on a Made with Mischief is the name of the software. Uh, I Do I recommend Made with Mischief? And I'm doing a little sidetrack here. Do I recommend Made with Mischief? Well, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. It, it does cost. I do try to recommend things that are free when you're starting out. It's It's about... As of this recording, I think it's about 25 bucks. But the problem is, even though I really love this software, they just haven't updated it since in, in, in a few years, maybe three years. And that just makes me a little bit nervous on recommending it. I do enjoy it. It has it has some it's very simple and it's lightweight. I like lightweight, simple things. Let's get back to this. So we are going to you just you just made a circle. These are going to be your building blocks. All of your shapes, everything can be broken down to just simple shapes. That's a square. Now, why did I draw the square like that? Because I can erase this and I can get a much straighter line. And this is one of the things that I want you to, to keep in mind. When you are drawing this, we, I want to use the power of your straight lines. So when you make your lines, overdraw them. It's okay if you go over because you can just go ahead and erase them. This is going to be pretty pretty important, I think, at making your, your draftsmanship increase and, and having it look very professional. This is one of those little secrets. And, and, and since I'm shooting this as a newer video, I'm not quite sure if I, if I do mention this, so I want to mention this now. And when you're doing your ovals, there are going to be those of you that are going to have your your ovals, your ellipses is what they're technically called. And you'll see that in the video. But here's what I want you to think about when you do get to that section is this. And perhaps I might even make another video for that. What you're doing, if for those of you that can write cursive, if you think about writing an O like that, O equals oval. So what you're doing, instead of curling right around the middle, you're just doing that. Now, it's going to take a little bit of practice to maybe straighten them out. But that's essentially what you're doing when you're drawing an, an oval. This is some of the things that I want you to keep in mind. <clears throat> Your straight lines are going to come become very important to you when you get to the lesson of the center line. So you definitely want to keep practicing your basic line work when you get to the triangles. And you remember the line speed that I taught you about in the very, very first introduction to the line video. That's going to that's going to go. That's going to be important. And what do I mean by line speed? When you draw draw like this, you see how crooked that line is. But when I do like that with a little bit of confidence. And by the way, I'm drawing from my body away from me. And let me also say this, that I don't, however you hold your pencil, that's entirely up to you. If you are sitting at a big, gigantic easel, maybe you are supposed to do that artistic thing with the thumb is like where your thumb is right here. And let me, like you've got a hand right here and like your finger is right here. Try this really bad hand here. And like the pencil, you've seen people do this where the pencil is like this or the pencil is way extended out here. That's cool if you're going to art school, but I'm sitting here at a tablet or I'm drawing on a piece of paper. Either it's going to be an 11 by 17 if I want to get crazy and draw something big or I'm drawing on an 8 by 10 piece of paper. Then th that's all that you really need, in my opinion. Uh, so. That's all that you really need. And you don't have to hold your pencil like this. Hold it however you want. However, whatever makes your hand more comfortable, then that's how you're going to draw. That's how I draw. I draw like I write, even though they say, and I don't know who the they are, but they do say it. 
Oh, you're supposed to draw a, a certain way. No, that's that's just simply not true. I, th- I think a lot of these things that maybe you've been hearing go to like some of the more the fine art art academies and art schools and things like that. And it's not a slight to them in any way. But sometimes with tradition, you keep doing things the same way. Now, this might make sense to hold your pencil like this. If you are a person standing here and you're drawing on a board that's like that big, (laughs) then that would make sense. And maybe even if you're sitting at a big drafting table, I got a huge drafting table, but I still find myself not drawing like this. So I want you guys to dive in. You see that this lesson is going to compound with the previous set of lessons. And so what you're going to be able to do is start making your shapes. And the 2D hard shapes that you're about to jump into are going to get you to the next stage, which is going to be uh, taking those same shapes and, and playing around with them a little bit. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Hope you guys enjoy this section. If you've made it this far, you're doing an awesome job. I know it doesn't seem like you're making, you may not seem like you're making very much progress. For those of you out there that are kind of like, I don't know if I'm doing well on this. I don't feel, don't worry about it. Uh, And if there's something, by the way, and if there's exterior things out there in your life that you got to take care of, you take care of that stuff first. All right. Then come back to the class when you're ready. But I would love for you to go ahead and start the next video and I'll see you soon. We are going to talk about the rectangle. Welcome to section three, where hopefully you've been practicing and doing a lot of your exercises. And now we are going to get this to pay off a little bit. So the rectangle. There's a few ways that you can do the rectangle. Now, some of you may be thinking to do that like a rectangle. I want to say that I don't want you to really do it that way. I want you to build your rectangle off of a series of lines. So you're going to have one line. And what you're going to do is I want you to draw over the lines. Now, it's not a perfect rectangle, and that's okay. And I can turn this, because all you're doing is just putting together those lines. So you see I'm turning turning my pencil. Well, you can't see that, but you can tell from the lines that I'm pulling down that I'm just going in different directions. And that's much more of a square. (laughs) So we're just gonna make a rectangle. And I want you to draw over it. Or should I say I want you to draw the lines over it. So that's kind of a bad line right there. And I just wanna correct the line and then I'm gonna correct the line here. And what I want you to do, because a rectangle is pretty self-explanatory, the one thing that I wanted to explain to you is I want you to draw over these and I want you to make them in every direction that you can make them. And if you accidentally do that, then just draw over them. Now, once you have this page set up, I want you to take your eraser and I want you to erase off the corners. And you will have a much cleaner, much nicer line. So I'm gonna introduce you this concept to kind of put away the how many of these do I do how many how often should I practice I've heard this before from more than one artist from YouTube to artists that I know when in doubt draw a hundred and so by the way you're gonna be drawing thousands of these if not millions not today, not within this course, but over the over the course of your artistic career, and whether it's a career or it's just a hobby, you will be drawing a lot of these. So you can see this already looks a lot better. With the rectangle, it's pretty important to try to make those lines as straight as possible. But with the rectangle, I'm going to expand on it a bit and say that it doesn't just necessarily have to be the classic regular rectangle we can include other uh i I believe it is uh other quad quadra wait quadrilaterals i think meaning four lateral lines so we can use some trapezoids and things like that so we can use that i want you to start drawing these for your next ones it's a rectangle now it, it is technically a trapezoid but what you will find out is that when we get to 
drawing when you get to drawing perspective you will find that this will be very handy to help you draw perspective so I want you to just draw this that's all I want you to do that's it and you can make them go vice versa that's fine so we're gonna we're gonna encompass this within our rectangles and then I want you to go ahead and once again erase those lines so that's gonna be your second rectangle that you're gonna draw and like I said these lessons are gonna be rather short because the important part is for you to practice so you already know how to do this in case there you may be you may say okay this is easy this is cool some of you out there in the course may be thinking well this is a little bit difficult but I want to reassure you that the more you practice this the more or the less difficult it will become so if you're doing that I want you to think about it this way this is everything this is nothing different than what I taught you in section 2 you're just drawing a line you're drawing another line and they are running parallel to each other so now that they're running a parallel to each other you're just going to make another line so you're either going to do it the first way we're just going to make another line just a regular line and another line so one two and then we're going to go this way and that way and it doesn't make it you're going to mess up on this you're going to probably do something like that there is no wrong answer to this I want you to try and keep it as straight as possible or keep it going to a point but if you get frustrated take a break and go right back at it and then I want you to draw the small line on the bottom big line on top you see I made that a little bit crooked myself and correct that I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna try and do that and I may want to correct that line again and finally I want you to do this we're just gonna keep with the two lines that's those same two lines and I want you to do this and that and I want you to try and make these like that and I also want you to go in all different directions as well so here and here you're gonna notice that you're you're gonna notice that they are gonna be with this as with everything you're gonna do depending on the direction it's gonna be easier to do it a certain way for you and every artist is just gonna be slightly different and yes please spin the paper turn the paper turn your drawing pad for those of you that got it that wind up getting a sketchbook anyway I know some of you did statistically speaking somebody out there said I'm just gonna get a sketchbook because I want to buy a sketchbook and there's nothing wrong with that buying art supplies is always exciting and cool and fun so let's go ahead and just do this and we're gonna erase those lines around here all of this is going to help you draw within draw boxes and this is going to help you do that a lot but before that before you draw the boxes I just want to show you how easy it is to draw these versions of rectangles so to end this lesson like I said when in doubt do 100 but if at bare minimum I want you to fill up five sheets you're a much better artist than you were in section two so now I'm gonna work you just a tiny little bit harder five sheets and maybe do ten 10 of each so you're going to do 10 of you're going to do 10 of the regular just the regular regular traditional then you're going to do 10 of these where the the bottom line is going to be smaller than the top line and don't forget to erase your lines underneath there and then we're going to do where the top line is smaller then you're gonna do where both lines are parallel so parallel means that they are not touching that if they went off into space they would never touch each other so parallel those are parallel lines these right here are not parallel lines because they would eventually meet they're gonna meet to a point but right now I just want you to concentrate 
on just drawing. I just want you to concentrate on just drawing your rectangles. So, um, yes, I want you to just keep drawing those and then I will see you in the next lesson. Not a very hard lesson at all. So this is going to be the square. And the thing about the square, obviously I'm not going to give and get into a really big lecture on the square because you know that the square is going to be the rectangle that is even on all those sides. You're going to try and make them as even as possible. And you're going to fill up a page with these. And that's all I want you, I want you to try and make this as even as possible. That's it. And you can draw them in all different directions, but the point of this is that not to make it longer on one side or or have them running, I guess, perpendicular is the right term, or have them intersect each other. The thing about this is that we want to have all of the sides as even as possible. And that takes a bit of practice. And all my squares aren't perfect, but I want to try and get them to be as close to that as I could possibly make them. And that was a horrible line right there. And when you and when you make a bad line, I just want you to correct it. Whoops. That was not the eraser. Okay. And so that's what I was talking about. I made that really bad line right there. This bottom line is not all that awesome. I should definitely be spinning and turning this so you notice. As I turn this, I can kind of see a lot better. That makes that even better. So I want you to go back and start looking at start looking at your work and start cleaning it up a little bit. I want you to get into the habit of cleaning up your work right in the very beginning because I think it's a very important skill for you to have. And so yeah, I want you to fill up the pages with just squares. Be cognizant that it's a square. I don't know why I just corrected that, but You see, I'm turning these, and I'm just making that straight line. All right, that's going to be your square exercise, and like I said, when in doubt, do 100. I won't take you that long, by the way. I, I don't. I'm again. I don't want you to make a big production out of these exercises. I just want you to be able to feel comfortable enough to do them. Remember, you're going to mess up a lot. And if you're not messing up a lot, then that's okay. But it's quite normal for you to probably do this and then maybe you did, you're trying to do your squares and you realize that, oh, I did, I did a rectangle. Oh, but don't worry about all that. That's fine. You just got to keep at it. Or you might do this to where it looks, doesn't look as neat as it could look. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to go back over it. Look at where the line is and go, okay, that's not right. That's right, right there. And then you're going to erase the lines that are not correct. And the reason why I want you to do this, I, I think at one time I was under the idea that you should not erase, really erase a lot of lines when you make mistakes. But I do want you to correct your mistakes. So when you make mistakes, I want you to look at what you did wrong and try and redraw it. That's going to help you out a lot more than just correcting the line. But I want you to try and redraw it and make it better. And so maybe I should say for the first part, if you do something really drastically wrong, just start again. But then I do want you to go back and try and correct those mistakes once you get the hang of it, once you put this into your muscle memory. All right, I'm going to stop talking now, and uh, I will see you after you practice, of course, into the next video. We are going to start this out with a simple equilateral triangle, meaning a triangle that is equal on all of its corners or on all of its degrees. I am not going to turn this into a geometry lesson, although drawing is kind of a geometry lesson. So what you're going to do is you're just going to make some equilateral triangles and you're going to fill up a page with them. Three sided triangles. And what you're going to do is you're going to make them on all different angles. You're going to have some that are up, some that are down. And of course, 
you're going to go back and you're going to clean up you're going to clean up your triangles and that's what I want you to do for a whole sheet our new motto is when in doubt draw 100 well, I'll tell you what when in doubt draw 50 to start out with <laughs> the more you draw the better you're gonna get at this so that's gonna be a, a bunch of equilateral triangles and then I want you just to draw a right triangle which is to where we got one line we got another line and that should be a right angle so that's what that is with your triangle with your right triangle this is another thing that will help you out within perspective so so I got this perspective line here let's say I got a line here and I'm gonna do like a quick well actually let's do this I drew that too far so I got here and this is where your triangles help out you can see right here this is a right triangle I mean, it's not actually where your line is going to is going to be past that but there's another triangle right there but I would like for you just to concentrate on just drawing a right triangle I just want to kind of show you in a direction of where it's going to be going and of course I want you to draw them in all different directions then I want you to erase it so I just want you to kind of concentrate on that uh, as far as like doing a triangle like this to where it is it's almost as if you took a two triangles and put them on top of each other so that's a right triangle I think this is a, that's an isosceles I think it's been a while And if you want to do some of those, then that's great. This is also very helpful. So, because with this angle right here, if we look at this, I could just bring those down, and you got a wedge shape right there. So, I want you to start just doing the right triangle. I'm sorry, the equilateral, a right triangle sorry <laughs> see I messed up on that one a few times so letting you know it's normal I'm gonna do it the other way so also you notice it looks like a four but we don't want to draw a four and then you're going to draw you're gonna draw that the other triangle then if you mess up I want you to go back and correct it so that's what you're going to do and that is going to do a few of those it's a little bit more difficult but I want you to go ahead and try it anyway and keep at it it's just gonna take you some time if it takes you a little bit more time than you think don't worry you're not behind nobody in this course is behind you're just going at the pace that you need in order to learn it very important so there you go all right I am going to stop this and you're going to go on to the next video after you are done practicing so we're gonna draw some ellipses let me go ahead and clear this an ellipse is simply a oblong circle that's what an ellipse is and what you want to try and do is not do that you want to try and do as many of these as you can and you want to 
do them in many different directions. And as you can see, sometimes I'm hitting them, sometimes I'm not. That's definitely not. And the thing about an ellipse is it's kind of hard to correct it. <laughs> you can go back over it again. And as a matter of fact, it's pretty self-explanatory. I just want you to make a page full of ellipses. As you've seen before, ellipses can do many, many things. And you've seen the demonstrations of me drawing the face. I always start with an ellipse. Always. So I don't want you to worry about this right now. You'll get to that. Don't worry. But right now, I just want you to draw the ellipse because this is actually not going to be a spherical shape just yet. This is going to be just a regular ellipse. And the thing about an ellipse, the middle part of it, because you'll hear this uh, if you decide to go on and do your other studies. There's another there's a book that I highly recommend by an, an a really amazing artist who also has a YouTube channel. He's called Scott Robertson. Fantastic stuff. Uh, so I highly recommend everything by him. Um, just I'm, I'm a big fan of his. So uh, yes, Scott Robertson. But you are going to see the smaller part of the middle of this is called the minor axis. And so when you fill up these pages, I want you just to see if you can draw the minor axis. So the, the way that you think, if you think you've done the ellipse correct, is if you would be able to fold over, if this were the fold and paper, this side should match this side. These sides should be equal to each other. And that goes with any part. So if you did ellipse like that, and by the way, it takes a lot of practice to draw to draw an, an ellipse and make it look okay. Now, granted, with this piece of software, I do have a bit of line correction, but as you can see, it's not, <laughs> sometimes it really doesn't help, <laughs> but that's okay. So what I'm doing in order to draw this is I'm really, I'm not drawing this. You can try and draw it with your elbow. That might work for you. So you may just want to kind of lock your shoulder a little bit, not lock it like it's really, like it's something really hard to do, like you're really straining your shoulder. We don't want you doing that. But if I want to make it smaller, then I'm just drawing it with my wrist. I'm just flicking my wrist. That's what I'm doing with this. I'm really flicking my wrist and I'm kind of just moving my fingers like I'm writing because what you're doing is you're just writing an O. That's what an ellipse is. It's an O or a zero. So I want you to make a page full of ellipses and try not to do that. Try to make them, try to close them off as much as possible. And you're going to go, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. So I would say take about 10 sheets of paper and just fill them up with ellipses. And then once you got the ellipses going, some of your better ones, go in and put in that minor axis. Well, I wouldn't do it for that one because that one was not good. But go ahead and see if you can put in that minor axis. So you're looking for the, the middle of the smaller side of it. Because the other side would be called the major axis, but I don't want you to worry about that. I just want you to look at that minor axis and just draw that in. That's all I want you to do. So that is going to be your ellipse work. So I want you to go ahead and do practice some ellipses. So you see these lessons aren't really, my lectures aren't really long and drawn out for this in the very beginning because they're just simple drills and exercises that are going to give you more confidence. So just to also give you a little sneak preview, if you were going to draw a car and that's really, really, really elaborate and advanced, you would probably put the wheelbase like this. Because that's just the basis of a wheel. That's a horrible wheelbase, but with the ellipse, that's also part of a cylinder. And then we got another C curve underneath it. That's a cylinder. That's one of the building blocks of everything. If I were taking a figure and moving it, 
let's just say that I just got this little simple box figure right here. I got an ellipse right there. And I pull out the hands if I wanted to let them know in a direction I want to go. See that? That was a little ellipse right there. Much more of a circle. And I'm making it match. His hands are back now. So I'm just drawing these little ellipses all over. They're all over the place. That's what I wanted to kind of show you. And actually, I usually teach that. So it's more of a bowl shape, but that bowl shape is an ellipse on the top. Minor axis. Minor axis divides this up, which is called the center line. You're going to learn about that real soon. But just giving you a preview of why I'm having you doing some of this stuff again. So, all right. Uh, go right ahead and draw yourself some ellipses. And I will see you when you're done with that in the next lesson. So please, please, please do practice. This is so very important. All right. So I want to show you something that's even hard for me to do is drawing a circle and that's about as good as I'm gonna get with a circle I can keep practicing it over and over again but this is just for fun but I do want you to draw the circle because it helps a circle is going to give you a sphere and you're just gonna lock your shoulder maybe you lock your elbow it depends on what you're comfortable with. And you're going to fill up a page with a bunch of circles and you're going to try and make them as round as you can make them. That's not a circle, but I'm going to leave it there to remind myself that just like that would, this was not really awesome. And so I want you to just draw circles. fill up pages and pages of circles and try not to draw sixes <laughs> and you want to make them round this is hard so if you wind up doing a bunch of these I don't blame you it's quite normal and I just want you to keep filling in the spaces of the circles now, what you can do, and you can also do this with the previous lessons of ellipse, hopefully you haven't thrown those pieces of paper away, is try and go over the circles a few times. Try to correct the ones that you messed up on. Try to trace over your own shapes. It's just a good exercise and it helps you. Why are you drawing so many circles? I usually start Sometimes if I'm not drawing a, a total, if, when I draw a profile, I, know, I notice that I kind of start with a circle because that's kind of the base of a skull. And I kind of line that up. Also with the circles, if I'm trying to figure out a pose or something like that, and I'm drawing my cylinders, I always draw a circle because I know that that represents, that's a shorthand for me drawing a sphere. So that's with the muscle right there. So that's what that is. So I think it's important for you to learn how to draw a circle. Don't beat yourself up too much if you're not really getting the circle around. That's not going to be as important. Uh, you just got to keep at it. There's just no other way to... I can't do the work for you. You got to dedicate yourself to just drawing these basic things. We're going to start to get in the in the next section. You're going to get into more organic shapes and you're going to see how things fitting together. So I just wanted to show you that and I will go ahead and see you after you draw some of your circles. When in doubt draw 50 or 100 or 20 depending on the time that you have and I will see you in the next and final lecture. So this last section or this last lecture, I just want to give you the concept of the center line. And the center line is simply, if we had a shape, we just want to find the center of it. And usually you'll find the center of the shape. You can eyeball it. 
That's really what a center line is. It's just a center line that divides things. And I'm going to show you how to do that once we get a bit more elaborate into when we start talking a bit more about things like perspective, etc. And so if you're trying to find the center, the finding the center line is going from corner to corner and then going from let me go back here. Going from corner to corner. <laughs> I have to adjust this. I have my microphone in the way. That's why it's kind of difficult for me to hit some of these angles. All right, so if you went to the center right there, there we go. If I would follow my own advice and turn the paper you would see that right here should be the center. And it's about even. And that's what I'm looking for. I want it to be about even. That's a quick way of finding your center line. You just take a, if you're looking at a square or a rectangle, we're going to go from corner to corner. And when you see, when you get into perspective, you will see that if I just divided this corner, and divided that corner up there like that, then right about the middle would be the center line descending in space. I know I have not told you that, but I just want to show you where this is going. So your center line can be something really, really elaborate. So if we got this shape right here, and I know it seems a little awkward, but I want to find it also can be, I want to divide this in half. And so I'm just kind of looking at the center line. And so I'm kind of eyeballing it, but I'm just trying to follow the contour of that shape. So with our ellipses, I could, I could take and find the center line right there. I'm looking at where the major axis is, or maybe even the minor axis. But if it's a sphere and it's curved, depending on what direction it's going, I know that I can that can be another center line right there. So the center line is just the line that's in the center that divides it. Just want to make you aware of that because I will be referring to it as we go further along. So with that said, let's take a big recap of what you've learned so far. So we know all about the lines and the rough lines and curve lines. You got S curves. You, you, you're aware that you can use lines as texture. You know about line accuracy, and you should be paying attention to line accuracy at this point. Told you a bit about line weight. That's something that's going to come into swing a little bit later. And you learned how to overdraw. So we're going to overdraw. And you made some rectangles. You made a square. Made a lot of triangles. You learned how to go back and erase those lines to clean up your work, but you want to pay attention to what you're cleaning up. Learned all about ellipses. You know what the minor axis is. You made a bunch of circles, and I made two bad ones right there. And you figured out what the center line is. Just putting those center lines in there. That's another center line. And so you learned a lot. You should feel really good about the stuff that you know so far because these are going to be the building blocks that you are going to move on to the next level with. So congratulate yourself. So now you're you're in like level three. So, you know, you're chasing bandits and you, you've made a bit of gold. So now you've you're you continue to quest forward uh, with this. I want you to go ahead and just. Take a sip of water. Take a small little break this time. Not, not as much of a big break. Because I really do want you to keep at it. And, and still, keep drawing your lines. Keep, keep practicing those straight lines. That's very important. Because you, you see how important the straight lines were and line accuracy. You saw how important that was with drawing the triangles, squares, and rectangles. So I'm going to stop talking, and I will see you in the next section.